In this Gumroad Quick Start tutorial, you'll learn how to set up your account to begin selling digital products online. This video covers everything you need to know to decide if Gumroad is right for you. In case you're unaware, Gumroad is popular because you can sell all kinds of digital products, ebooks, memberships, training courses, etc. Plus, it's very easy to use, handles payments, content distribution, has very direct fees, but there are some points to consider, of which we'll talk about. To get started, head over to gumroad.com and sign up using the method of your choice. After you sign up with your email account, you'll have to verify it during the sign up process. Once you've logged in, the first step is setting up your Gumroad account, then add your products, all of which is very straightforward. Let's go over here on the left and click on settings. On the main page, you can turn off or on any notifications you may want to receive, say about purchases, reviews, etc. Next, you'll have a support email that will be listed on every sale. This is where you'll want your customers to contact you. Next up is your refund policy, along with any fine print that describes your policy. From there, you have your time zones and currency, which are very self-explanatory. Then you have this purchasing power parity option. How it works is because different currencies have different purchasing power, this makes your product more affordable in other locations worldwide. So that's something for you to consider. Next, let's go up and click on profile. This is the page people will see when they look at your products. Think of it as your Gumroad storefront. Starting with your username, whatever you type in here will become part of the link you send to others. So be mindful of any branding that you use. The name field will be what the person will see if they receive any emails from you. And the bio is a short blurb about yourself, say your brand, the products you sell, etc. Now, the cool thing is as you make your changes, you'll see them reflected over here on the right. Next, you can upload your image or logo, hover over the placeholder, click delete, then click upload and choose the image that you want. In this design section, you can customize your profile by changing various fonts, along with changing the background colors and any highlights. After you're finished, click update settings. If you want to see how everything looks, click on this preview icon. Let's move on and talk about payments. At the prompt, you have to verify you have an ID and proof of residency. Just confirm them, then fill out the payment method of your choice. Gumroad offers several ways to get paid, for example, through your bank account, PayPal, or Stripe. So that brings us to the fees Gumroad charges, which as you can see is a 10% flat fee for all transactions, plus a 50 cent Gumroad fee, plus 2.9% plus a 30 cent credit card fee. Let's give you an example of how all that breaks down. If your product costs $10, the flat fee of 10% is $1, then add in another 50 cents plus your credit card fees of 2.9% plus an additional 30 cents, which comes out to 59 cents, which in this case brings your total fees to $2.09. So after everything is said and done, you walk away with $7.91. Okay, let's be honest. These fees are a bit steep, do add up, and can see why some people get turned off from Gumroad. Let's not kid ourselves. There are other services out there like PayHip that do charge less, but if you choose to go with Gumroad, here is an example of what you'll pay. Now, in full disclosure, I do sell all my products on Gumroad, of which you can see in the description below, which begs the question of why I even chose Gumroad. Well, long story short, in the past, I've used other services like eJunkie, Shopify, Etsy, WooCommerce, along with others, some of which charge a monthly fee, plus other higher fees, while some are just plain annoying to use. So after weighing everything out, I tend to favor convenience, and besides, no matter what service you choose, they're gonna charge you some fees. So I just went with Gumroad because honestly, I really didn't care. Now, will I switch platforms in the future? Sure, there's a good chance, but for now, Gumroad is working just fine and I'm okay with their fees. So that'll take care of your settings, Let's move on to the good stuff, which is uploading your products. On the left side, click Products, then New Product. The first step is to name your product. In this case, pardon the cheap plug, I'll use one of mine for today. Go ahead and enter the name. Next, choose the product type, and you can see your options right here. The most popular usages will be digital product or ebook. Since this is an ebook, let's go ahead and choose that option. Next, we'll fill in the price. Once completed, in the upper right hand corner, click on customize. This screen is where you want to add any additional information about your product. In this description is where you want to put your sales copy. 
which is something you should invest time in doing because a bad description can and will work against you. As you type your description, you can do basic text editing like making the words bold, italics, etc. You can also add links, images, audio, and a promo video. You can also create a custom URL. This is the link you want to send other people to check out your product. Gumroad also lets you create custom domains as well. You can get instructions by clicking learn more. Next up, you can add your image and thumbnail, both of which I made in Canva. One thing to note about the thumbnail, it can be a bit fickle, so make sure your dimensions are accurate. Next is the call to action, which you can select from the dropdown. This summary section lets you tell the person what's all included in their purchase. For example, a zip file with three documents, perhaps the file size, number of pages, etc. In the price field, you can adjust the price if you wish or let people pay what they want, which could get you some interesting results. We won't talk about versions today. Down the road, as you make more products, you can offer various bundles, perhaps a premium package, etc. Last, if you look at these settings, you also have the choice to limit quantities, show the number of sales, etc. Moving on, you can preview what the product page will look like by clicking over here on the right. Next, click on the content section. Now, this page is the most important because it's where you add your product. But if you're not careful, you'll miss this step. To add your product, click on the upload file icon, navigate to the source, and choose it, of which will most likely be on your computer. After the product is uploaded, you can also customize this page. As a tip, it's also a good idea to provide any additional information. For example, to download the file, click the download button. All sales are final, along with thanking them for the purchase, etc. Once completed, click publish and continue. If you want to preview the page, click here to see what it looks like. And there you go. From this point, it's just rinse and repeat to add more of your products. After you've completed uploading your products, if you choose products on the left-hand side, you'll see all of them listed out, which you can then edit, delete, or archive if you choose. Moving on, Gumroad also allows you to offer discounts. If you click on the checkout section, you'll be brought to the discount section. Click on new discount. From there, it's just fill in the blanks. Give your discount a name, save for a special sale, occasion, or holiday. You can use the code Gumroad provides or create your own. Next, you can choose which products will get the discount or go with all of them. For the type, you can offer a certain percentage or specific amount off. Down here in the settings section, you can play around with these, but the most relevant might be the limit validity period, which lets you set a time frame for when the discount is available. Once you're finished, click add discount. Next up is the checkout form section. Here, you can add a custom field if you want to collect more information about your customer. This discount section will add the field if a discount is available. You can also make some decisions about this recommendation section. I'd also suggest leaving this tip section turned on because people will kick in a few extra bucks and that's always a plus. Make sure to save your changes. The last option we'll discuss is this upsells option. An upsell is something that's included during the checkout process. In case you're unaware, an upsell is when you encourage a customer to purchase a more expensive item, upgrade, add-on, etc. Personally, I'm not a fan of upsells because I think they're too salesy, yet upsells can increase the amount of money you make and setting one up is very easy. Click the new upsell button, fill out the relevant details. As you proceed, you can see how the upsell will appear during the checkout. The next option we'll talk about is this email marketing section. This is a great place to increase your revenue. There's an old saying, the money is in the list, which is very true. The key here is to build relationships and not spam your people with constant hard sells. Rather send out informational emails, only promoting your products every now and then. Put another way, don't burn out your list. If you want to send out a broadcast email, click new email. This will bring up the editor. Just craft your email, choose your audience, and you can either send it out immediately or send it at a later time. Another cool feature is this workflow section, which allows you to send automated emails. Say, for example, two days after someone made a purchase, just to follow up on them. Click on new workflow. You can see your choices. Notice the layout is very similar to adding products. So how about we name it new customer follow-up, choosing the purchase option. We can make our choice in the has bought field. In this case, let's go with all, leaving it blank, then click on save and continue. On the next screen, click create email, script your message, 
The key area to focus on is right here where it reads zero after purchase. You want to make sure you pay attention and get the time delay correct. In our case, we'll send this two days after purchase. Let's go ahead and save our changes and go back. Moving on, where it reads sales, this is where you'll see a list of your customers, what they bought, where they came from, and you can issue any refunds if necessary. The analytics tab will show you information like the source, number of views, sales, conversions, etc. Another option with Gumroad is to provide other people with an affiliate link so they can promote your products to earn a commission. To get your affiliate link, in the lower left, where you see your username, click Affiliates, just copy the link, and note you can also adjust the amount the person earns. Moving on, it's important to note that Gumroad is also a marketplace where people can shop directly to buy products. This marketplace is known as Gumroad Discover. Basically, your product will be listed here after you meet the required criteria and goes through a review process, so this is something you can check out down the road. Now, as we start to wrap up, here are a few points to consider. When you're first starting out, perhaps offer your product for free to get some reviews, then charge for it somewhere down the road. Most important, make sure your refund policy is crystal clear. Don't be shy to mention it several times. Drive traffic from other places, say TikTok, YouTube, or wherever. Don't rely on the Gumroad Marketplace. Clarify upfront the amount of support you're willing to offer your customers since customer support can become very time consuming. All right, we did cover a lot in this tutorial about how to get started with Gumroad, but I hope this has helped you get an idea of how Gumroad works and provided some insight as to whether Gumroad would be a good solution for you to consider. Now, here's another video.